this and you just run after it and you finish strong every single time and you're a doer and I just love that about you. So raise your hand if you're that and be loud and proud about it. Okay. That's awesome. So I feel like there's a lot of you in this room who aren't or were you just kind of like shy to say it? I mean, you're usually not shy. So if you feel like you put yourself in a category with the turtle, you know, with me, raise your hand. Okay. Here's the thing I want every single one of you to know is that God crafted you that way. Yeah, you know, whether you're the tortoise or whether you're the hare, God designed you that way. Be who you are. But i got to tell you something funny about God. He has a sense of humor. And wherever we are on the spectrum, he's always trying to balance us out the other way. So there's times for all of us tortoises that he kind of pushes us and says, I want you out of your comfort zone, so I want you to do it the other way. And for you hairs, you know, the same is true. Sometimes he goes, I'm putting the reins on you, and I'm going to balance you out and show you another way to do it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because we need balance. But uh, here's what I want you to know, no matter what. This is a really cool thing, and it, it keeps you going through everything. And it's just my testimony. I know it's true because it kept me, it's kept me going for 32 years. But you know God wants to bless your business. He really does. And you may have either come through a time or be in a time, or you may be getting ready to go through a time where sometimes that's kind of foggy. Like, you know, you have days that you wake up and you don't really believe that truth. But just always remind yourself of that. I remember um, for years that would just ring in my head because Beverly Terrell always said that. God wants to bless your business. God wants to bless your business. God wants to bless your business. And some days, i got to tell you, that's the only thing that got me through. Because wait a minute, Beverly reminded me that God wants to bless my business. And I knew it was true because here is the reality. Um, for those of us who are in Christ Jesus, God's favor is on you. Yeah, amen. It, that's not going to leave you. Now, sometimes if he's trying to get us back in line, that may look different. Sometimes he goes, oh, i got to get your attention. i got to remind you where that came from. And so the thing that we're doing may not feel like it's favored, but God's favor never leaves you. So I want you to remember that. And um, here is the thing. Um, the fact that God wants to bless our business doesn't change the reality that life and business are cyclical. So we're going to go through different times. We're going to go through times that are in season, and we're going to go through times that are out of season. Now, in season, what do you do? That's pretty easy. In season is fun. You get to live off the fat of the land and celebrate what God is doing. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Like that. We all know what to do then. It's awesome. Don't forget during in season though where that comes from. Right. That, that is God's blessing. And he's not going to share his glory. So make sure you give glory where glory is due when you're in season. Um, and he wants to bless your business. Guess what? even out of season. Remember that he wants to bless your season. So when you're out of season in your business and or in your life, what do you do? Well, sometimes there's seasons of waiting. Here's what I have learned, and I really probably haven't learned the lesson too easily. Um, really out of season, a lot of times we just want to pull the covers over our head and wait till a new day comes. <laughs> and when the new day comes, then we'll get out of bed. But I have learned that waiting, when God says, wait on the Lord. How many of y'all have ever heard that before? Just wait on the Lord. Here is what I've learned. Waiting is active. And when you're in a season of waiting, your soul and your spirit is quiet, and you're waiting on the Lord, and you may not see results, but you still, it may be at a different pace, but you put one foot in front of the other, and you keep moving forward. You keep doing the things that you have learned to do in season. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's not always easy to do. Now, and sometimes <coughs> there may be some sorrow with it, and there may be some grief. That's okay. Um, this is something God is taking me into new territory and teaching me as a leader. And it's very, very different. It's a hard lesson to learn. Did you know that you can experience sorrow and grief and walk through it and feel it to its fullest at the 
very same time that you're meditating on truth and thinking positively? Yes. <laughs> Did you know that as a person, as a daughter of the king, and as a leader, the more you learn to do that, it will propel you forward? I'm preaching to myself now because I, I've learned the opposite. I've learned to stuff the grief and the sorrow and the pain and work. And you know what? If you're a strong leader, you probably learned to do the same thing too. So it's okay during seasons of waiting and out of season to walk through those feelings and yet stand in faith. And I just heard that y'all just heard an awesome uh, message and encouragement and inspiration about that from Elizabeth. So I really think that when I got that this morning, I said, okay, Lord, what do you want me to tell them? I mean, I know I'm in a tell them fashion, but what else do you want me to tell them? And so I know he's speaking, because that's what he started downloading to me. So waited, waiting is active. If he has said wait, that it's not time yet, keep working step by step, Doing what you know to do. In fact, Andy Horner said it this way. Do it one more time. Think about that a second. Do it one more time. You're never finished. Just do it one more time. When you get to the very end, do it one more time. Keep working. Keep watching. Keep praying. Now, in the process, make sure you're doing what God wants you to do. Like, seriously, that's really important. <laughs> and that you're doing the right things. But here's the promise that we have in Galatians 6, 9. It tells us, and let us not get tired of doing what is right, for after a while, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't get discouraged. Mm -hmm. Now, how cool is that? Now, the reason I preface that with make sure you're doing what God wants you to do, because if you're doing it in your own strength and you're, you know, acting just out of your own sheer willpower and not doing really what he's called you to do, and what he's, if you're not walking in obedience, it, it's going to be for naught. You know, you're not going to have fruit from that. But um, <clears throat> you will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't get discouraged and give up. So... What is the harvest that you're looking for? What is the harvest that God has called you to? If you don't know, ask him. Ask him. Maybe, maybe during your season of waiting, he wants to, I know he does, not me. He wants to download vision to you and make your path straight before you. So I know he's going to do that now. I love this song that we just heard. Wasn't that awesome? I could put that on repeat and listen to it. Um, where's our Where's our little singer? They don't recognize you without a I want to take it one step further. I have a word for you for 2016. This is how Kent and I started off 2016 with a conference at our church um, with very dynamic preacher. He's amazing. Um, but this is the word for, 2006, for 2016. Um, maybe some of you have experienced some failure or you've walked in some failure. If you haven't, I mean, it's inevitable. You will at some point because that propels us forward. But we're going to go from failure to surviving, but God does not leave us in the survive mode. That is not his plan for us. We will, he will never leave us in survival mode. You know what's always in front of us? Thrive. God wants you to thrive this year. And I believe that's not just a word for any of us in Premier. I really believe that is a message from God to his people this year. So I think that's really exciting. Now, um, man, did Jerry give us some awesome tools. Yeah. Like she, that really encouraged me. <coughs> um, there was so much of that that I needed to hear that I needed. There were so many things I wrote down. I used to do that. I forgot about that. I got to start doing that again and do something new. Um, 
But I want you to take those tools that she gave you, and um, in Judges 3.31, there's a guy that's mentioned one time that he did something great. His name is Shamgar. Have y'all ever heard of Shamgar? Anybody know about Shamgar? Oh, you heard it here first. Shamgar did something incredible. At that point in time, it's in um, Judges 3.31. It's the very last verse at the end of the chapter. Shamgar was living at a time that really um, everything that Israel had had been depleted. And they, they really didn't even have good weapons of warfare. But what, they, what Shamgar did have, he had an Osco. Thank you so much. Anybody know what an Osco is? I didn't either. <laughs> I had to look it up. I have heard somebody tell the story that um, it, he did this with the jawbone of a donkey, but um, when I started researching it and I really read that um, verse, that's not true at all. I was like, seriously, how did these things get miscommunicated that? <laughs> Actually, an ox goat is a nice weapon, but not when you think it's all you have to fend off all the enemies coming against you. And um, you know anything about Old Testament Bible history, Israel constantly has all kinds of really fierce enemies coming against them. Well, all Shamgar had at that time was an ox goat, and it's a big wooden stick or spear, basically, that can be like five to eight feet long, and it does it has a metal spear at the end. But it really, it's not it's not a weapon of warfare, actually. What they would use it for is when they were plowing to prod the ox because it, it, the ox's kind of nature of reaction was to fight against it, it would really harm them, as you can imagine. Um, and so the ox didn't want to do that. <laughs> so it really just kept the ox in line. So that's all Shamgar had. And you know what he did? He saved the nation of Israel with it. He slew 600 Philistines. Now, the Philistines were giants. Anybody remember, like, uh, somebody else who slew a Philistine? <laughs> David slew the giant, Goliath, with a stone. Goliath was a Philistine. And so, the, you know, the rest of the Philistines were small. They were giant people. And that's a whole other stuff you can learn about giants. But um, they were really evil. Man, they really were. And so um, he used that ox goat and slew 600 Philistines. So what's the lesson that we take away? With Shamgar, is do what you can, when you can, with what you have. And I just said that wrong. But I had it written down here exactly. Do what you can where you are with what you have. Very good. Do what you can where you are with what you have. So y'all got some pretty good tools this morning, didn't you? Um, I think that will take you very far. Now, I'm getting ready to give you more uh, in your old fashioned arsenal. Okay? How many of y'all, just because I want you to know you're in good company, and I think there's some of you who are